Hey everybody, here we are. We're in Rossay again. Uh, I'm gonna go out and dive on a boat mooring. So I haven't checked this boat mooring in about two years. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how degraded the chain is. Hopefully everything's intact. I'm gonna double check those shackles all the way down to the block. Uh, right now, it's the spring freshet. So the water level, it's up maybe eight feet above what the normal level is in the summertime. And you know, anytime you're in the river, there's a chance to see anything. So I'm gonna bring my bag with me in case we find some garbage. And also, uh, maybe there's gonna be a sturgeon, maybe some fish or something. So let's go take a look. So this right here is called a winter ball. And this one here is made out of uh, aluminum and it floats. So the good advantage about this compared to the other type of buoys people will put out in the winter time is uh, right here, there's a lot of ice fishing shacks. So that means a lot of people are out here with their trucks and sometimes they come out and they hit buoys for fun. Not everybody, but sometimes people do. This one here, you can see right there, it's actually been hit by a speedboat. So that's from a propeller blade hitting it. Some dummies went out here and ran this over. Uh, it's really good that we have this metal one because if this was plastic, it would have sank and you'd have to come out here, get a dive to actually find the buoy or find the uh, mooring block itself. So the visibility doesn't look very good, but we're gonna go down right now, give it a try. Hopefully you can see some stuff. I also have a uh, flashlight as well. So hopefully it'll make it a little bit lighter down there. I know it's pretty dark when you get down there, even in the summertime. Another interesting story out here a couple years ago, I was out swimming in the afternoon or in the evening and uh, I was just on my back like this, enjoying it, the sun was setting and then I hit something and I thought it was one of the sailboats that was out here. I looked back and the boats were like, I don't know, 30 feet away from me and there was nothing around. So I know there's big things in this river. I've seen a lot of sturgeon out here, a few of them at least six feet long, maybe one that would have been about 16 feet long right in this area so you never know what you can find in this river i got a waterproof case on now so it might be kind of hard to hear me uh there's mike my man watch just to show you how little visibility there is here try to look at my foot That's a long way down, and the visibility might be only about three feet, so it'll be fun.
So we just got back out of the water. That was a really successful dive. Uh, got down there, I only used about a thousand PSI and we were down for 17 minutes at a depth of 25 feet. Uh, you can see just how dark it is. When you're at the bottom 25 feet, it's as dark as nighttime. I'm glad that I brought that flashlight, it really came in handy. So I checked over that chain and all the connections look good. That rope uh, is so long that most of that chain always sits in the mud. So the mud will help protect that metal because it keeps all the oxygen out from, uh, you know, making it rust and corrode. So I'd say that's good for a number of years now. I was only able to find one piece of garbage when I was there and it was a can. But as I started getting close to it, uh, the muddy bottom started silting up everywhere. So I wasn't able to see. And I, I even I stuck around that mooring for that mooring block for a little bit and it still never cleared up. So I had to come back up to the surface. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.